Hi, welcome back. This is Deborah Peters from The Deborah Peters Show, and I'm absolutely thrilled to have you join me again today. Thank you so much for the likes and the shares and the subscribes on my YouTube channel. I'm delighted to uh, be able to get this content out to you and just hope that it fills a gap and enables you to move your business forward and to be able to accelerate. So today's topic, oh, by the way, thanks for the comment about the audio yesterday. You know what happened is I actually forgot my microphone. I was so excited to record yesterday's show. I, I just sat down in front of my computer and started recording. But today I remembered to plug it in. So there you go. Um, I have one of the best microphones, so hopefully this is a much better quality of sound for you. And I welcome your comments, so let me know what it is that you'd like me to improve upon or maybe what topics you'd like me to bring to the table, and I will definitely um, do that for you. So today's topic, today's show is the two different types of business. Now I know there's, you're probably thinking, what's she talking about? There's like thousands of types of business, and yes, there are. However, for today's show, we're drilling this down, we're deducing this down to being very, very simple. There's two different types of business. I want you to take a look at where you think you're at, and then I'm going to give you my business accelerator assessment. It's complimentary, and it's a complete 360 diagnostic on your business. I'm telling you, it's a thought provoker. It will open your eyes as to what it is that you can do right away to begin to shift your business. And you know, it's, it's autumn pretty much. We're rolling up here onto Labor Day, so we're heading into Q4. What a better time to, to do a little tune-up on your business so you can finish 2018 really, really strong. So the two different types of business. Well, it's pretty simple. You're either internally focused, where you're in alignment, you understand your value proposition, you have imprinted that value proposition within the psyche and the culture of your company, and everyone or pretty much the large majority of your team are on board and there's an alignment, there's a connection to that value proposition. Or you are externally focused and everybody's running around uh, with their hair on fire, <laughs> trying to fix external problems and not really sure how to figure that out because you're giving away all of their power or you're giving away all of your power to some false premise that there's the economy that's holding you back or the politics are holding you back or people on your team aren't performing and they're holding you back. Whatever that inner dialogue is, whatever that story is, is trying to change conditions because you're never going to be able to change people. You, you can't, I mean, even if you fly into Capitol Hill, you're not going to be able to change the politics. Look, at the end of the day, it really just comes down to what you're focused on. You know, I tell this story when I'm teaching my um, business accelerator boot camps, and I tell a story about race car drivers and the training that they go through. And one of the elements in the training to be a professional race car driver is to really fine tune and dial down your focus. Your ability to focus is what creates your outcomes. Now, if you don't have the ability to focus and you're all over the map, then of course you're gonna get those kinds of results, right? But let me get back to the two different kinds of business, and then I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about race car driving school. So when you're internally focused on your business, you know that whatever it is that you put in place and whatever focus you create with yourself and with your team are the results that you're going to achieve, regardless of what the circumstances may look like. When you're externally focused, you're looking outside of yourself, you're looking outside of the business, you're looking at the blocks, the, the negative um, information that's floating around. You're probably paying a lot of attention to your competition. And these kinds of things will just derail you from the creation process. 
You know, like I talked yesterday in, in yesterday episode two, and I was talking about being a creator, right? Create, create, create. So if you're internally focused, you're really driving the energy first, and then that energy is turning into actual key activities. So as we map out your business model map, we're looking at what the key activities are that you need to be doing on a daily basis in order for you to hit the marks that you want to hit. Now, how do you get dialed into an internal process so that whatever else is going out there doesn't affect you? Well, first of all, you've got to have a really well laid out calendared meeting rhythm. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to be probably meeting with yourself. Maybe you have a coach, maybe you have a mentor, um, maybe you have a spouse, like someone that you can bounce things off of. Maybe it's you, like you're your mastermind, which is something that I highly recommend. So if you have a team, maybe you, you're managing multiple teams of people. Maybe you're in an upper management role and you're managing uh, and, and leading managers. Getting that meeting rhythm on the calendar and getting that meeting rhythm dialed down is really the key to having a successful internal focus. Now, you can start off with the bigger picture. I always like to go meta first. So designing that bigger picture, what does the year look like? The annual strategic plan. So this idea that you need to have a five or 10 year plan, I am not a big fan of that. I don't teach that. I've stopped teaching that. I've stopped referencing that. And the reason is because what you think you want in five or 10 years you, is probably going to be archaic in two years. So just getting an annual strategic plan sorted out and mapped out, something that you can connect to, and then you can duplicate or repurpose on an annual basis kind of makes you more nimble, right? And that nimbleness enables you to let in more ideas, more possibilities, more creative thought that then can turn into and generate projects and, and new outcomes. So the other step around this is with your meeting rhythm, you're able to create a focus. And the focus then takes your eye off of what's not working and puts your eye on what you can create. And see, this is what makes professional race car drivers so, uh, I mean, it separates the, it separates where the rubber meets the road for lack of a better term. So the one thing that they teach professional race car drivers is where to put the car. Now, if you're on the track and you're doing a couple hundred miles an hour, you think the stakes are pretty high? Absolutely. So one small error and not only could you crash and burn, but you could cause an entire end of the race by causing everybody else to crash and burn. So the key focus is where they want to put the car. Now, it isn't about where the car will fit, right? It's where they want to put the car. So it's not about avoiding the wall um, on the outside. It's not about avoiding the, the wall on the inside. It's not about avoiding the car in front of them, beside them, behind them. It's about where they want to put their car. And I remember one time I was at a seminar and we were talking about how, you know, where there is no way, when you ask, a way will be made. And this is proven race after race after race, where you see these miraculous moves by these cars that are at top speed. And it's like, oh my God, how did the car fit there? Well, it all comes down to energy. It all comes down to what you're focusing on. So when you focus on where you want to put your business, and then you bring your entire team into alignment through your meeting rhythm, through your value proposition, then that completely changes the game. It puts you into an inner focus and that inner focus always becomes outer results. Whereas conversely, 
if you put yourself into an outer focus, that upsets your inner peace, okay? So your inner focus creates your outer results, whereas you know, focusing on the outer then interrupts your inner peace. So there you have it. The two different types of businesses are, to recap, so it's, are you an inner focus team where you're aligned on your value proposition, you're aligned on what it is that you're creating, you have a meeting rhythm that you're utilizing on a consistent basis to stay in the energy flow, and then thirdly, are you acting on the key activities that then support that vision? And those can change on a daily basis. Sometimes those can change on a moment to moment basis where I know with a lot of companies we've worked with, those that hold too tightly to a list of key activities, <clears throat> pardon me, that doesn't leave room for any creative thought or adjustments on the fly have the tendency to, to really kind of choke the life out of the possibility of the business. So you want to have something that's a little more loose. So there's room for that inner guidance to come in because we're, we're all, we all have that. And, you know, when you onboard the right team members, then there, there needs to be an element of trust where you just trust that they're going to be able to execute and do what they're, what they're meant to do and to produce the results that you've defined in the inner focus. So that's it, my friends, the two different types of businesses. I gave you a few extra tidbits in here around the meeting rhythm and the focus. So I hope you put that to good use. And I hope that you are able to channel this into your business growth. And I want to invite you to just go ahead and take advantage of, I'm going to pop in the link here for you guys. Um, take advantage of my business accelerator assessment. It's complimentary. And it does a really big and deep dive into every aspect of your business, from your strategic plan to your KPIs to how you manage and structure your finances. And I'd love to be a part of that with you. We have some annual strategy sessions, uh, spaces on my calendar still available for year end for you to set up 2019. And of course, our upcoming Business Accelerator Bootcamp is coming up on the 13th and 14th of September. So definitely join us. All right, my friends, wishing you a blessed day. This is Deborah Peters signing off. And you have been part of my first um, round and season one of the Deborah Peters Show. And for that, I am eternally grateful. Love you. Take care. Bye.